host Dave Michaels. I'm with uh, Aziz Karavala. It's time for Real Time Recorded, week 14 of 2021. So uh, uh, kind of a slow week, Ziz. Uh, not a whole lot to cover this week. Uh, I did see um, an interesting announcement from Voss. Did you see that? I did. And, uh, you know, Voss is kind of an interesting company. We, I don't think we've talked about them yet on Real Time Recorded. They're in the UC management space, which... Um, you know, isn't the most exciting space, although it's incredibly important, right? So boring topic, man. It's infrastructure. <laughs> it's like roads and bridges. Who cares? Yeah, well, you need it. Uh, and frankly, none of the UC vendors really do management very well. And so a lot of the vendors actually OEM the Voss product. Uh, it's not just a good water, right? It's a good management product as well. Um, I, you know, what they announced was the general availability of, uh, of their suite as a service. So now it's uh, uh, available from the cloud and that's important because it, you know, it, you know, it scales to a broader audience. You don't have to deploy your own appliance and things like that. But Voss does, they have a lot of cool capabilities. So as part of their suite, uh, they have an audit capability as well as helping migrate from on-prem, uh, to cloud or from one vendor to another. Uh, they have a whole bunch of automation tools. And so if you think of, you know, a service provider or a large enterprise having to provision a whole bunch of users, you can do that through their automation tool. So instead of having to do it one by one, it's a, you know, it does cut down on a lot of errors. Um, I think one of the more interesting things they have is an analytic, a bunch of analytic tools now that can help uh, with uh, performance assurance, with, uh, you know, predictive capabilities and things like that. So Voss is, they are, there's a bunch of vendors that play in the space. I think they're, they're one of the better ones. In fact, they might be best in class. They scale certainly to you know, to telco grade. Um, and I think having it be available as a service makes a lot of sense because it helps, you know, broaden the applicability of who they appeal to. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said the telco grade because they appeal to enterprises and service providers. But uh, the category as a whole just doesn't get very much attention. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we're actually talking about it uh, on the real time recorded because it deserves a little more attention. Um, the the uh, These applications pay for themselves very quickly in terms of being uh, agile and being able to respond to things much quicker quicker and of, co of course in terms of uh, re reducing uh, reducing downtime uh, you, you know it typically takes you know maybe 20 minutes to add a new user to a, any kind of UC system uh, with something like Voss you could do it in just you know a couple minutes or something like that it could really streamline operations you were talking about analytics I think the term you're supposed to use these days is Actionable insights. Uh, as yes. he has, uh, take it from me. At, uh, at the, uh, actionable insights, um, and I, I and something you didn't mention was that these can really streamline uh, processes around multi-vendor uh, implementations. And so, if you've yes. got uh, two or three vendors involved in your UC implementation or your contact center implementation, um, uh, it, it could really streamline that because it will talk to multiple systems. So you, it's a kind of an abstraction layer. You, you put in one set of commands, and they'll figure out what to do. Um, and something else you didn't mention was the self-healing capabilities. A lot of these, these applications like Voss uh, can automatically provision new resources as they're needed, uh, can automatically address um, uh, quality issues if it's detecting uh, uh, MOS issues or network issues. So uh, a lot of the self-healing capabilities are very nice. Now, there's other vendors in this space. Um, uh, Unify Square also had an announcement this week. Uh, they uh, they're in the Microsoft ecosystem uh, and, they, and they've extended their extended their expanded or extended I don't know their power suite uh, to uh, Microsoft Viva. Um, uh, I've mentioned Starfish a few times. They're kind of in a larger uh, yeah. contact center there's and more complex. There's integrated research. There's a whole bunch of them, right? So or prognosis. Yeah. The, now. Um, one one that you and I probably never talk about is Unimax because uh, they're all yeah. into that Star Wars stuff, and you know we're kind of Trek type of people. But but uh, you know there's there's a lot of vendors in the space that are uh, that could really streamline an, uh, implementation. So um, good good news from Voss. Yeah. So normally uh, we talk a lot about contact center, and there were a few contact center announcements this week, as uh, as some people pointed out to me on Twitter. But I think I wanted to I wanted to go a different direction this week on on uh, contact center. And, and that's this um, recurring theme I keep seeing, and I'm sure you're seeing it too, Zias, around uh, uh, whether Contact Center is a standalone application or if it's, whether it's part of a larger UC suite or whether you should get both UC and CC from, from a single provider or not. And um, this is a, an important trend that's kind of popping up more and more. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to hear it because all the contact center vendors really talk about is AI. But, but if you talk to them beyond 15 minutes, this topic kind of comes up. And it's an interesting, you know, this is the way it used to be. In the olden days, back in the PBX era, uh, the default provider of your contact center was the PBX vendor. It's just yeah. because of natural uh, add-on sale. But as uh, Seek has emerged as a new category, it was, it was led by a lot of uh, a lot of pure plays uh, that came out, um, and and so the Seachasm category emerged as a standalone pure play. This is just contact center. Now we're seeing that kind of change now. You know, Cisco just launched uh, WebEx contact center and their UC vendor, and then we're hearing it a lot in quarterly announcements. We've heard it from Eight by Eight, Vonage, Ring Central, I'm sure some others about how they're really seeing some momentum around UC and CC kind of dragging each other and having a lot of value together. Um, so on one hand, the spaces are converging. Uh, on the other, you've still got a lot of really strong, you know, pure plays, 5.9, uh, TalkDesk, uh, Amazon in contact uh, as a pure play. So, so uh, Zias, what are your thoughts on, on, uh, on, on this convergence or non-convergence? Uh, are you getting this question a lot from the people you're talking to? Yeah, well, the question is, what, is it, what does it mean to buy them together, right? Is, that, is it simply just purchase order integration? And that's certainly the case with a lot of UC vendors. Like, you know, Ring, although they sell content, a lot of contact center, you know, they do OEM and other product. Um, um, <clears throat> you know, Five9 has a partnership with Zoom. Uh, and, you know, Fuse has a partnership with, I can't remember who their partnership was with, but everyone seems to have a partnership. There's only a handful that actually have a, an integrated backend stack, and so I think that you know that's sort of the, the million dollar question: is is it enough to buy it from a single vendor, or you, do you actually need integrated capabilities? And I think um, you know right now, uh, if you look at the trend, right, that nobody sells more contact center from a UC vendor perhaps than Ring Central. Um, it doesn't appear that there's really um, a need to unify the backend, but I do think over time. There will be, and I think that's one of the reasons why you know Ring has made some purchases themselves. Um, there's always there's always rumors around you know will Zoom or will you know you know will they or won't they get into the contact center space? But I think this um, this this trend of having it unified in the back end does matter because all we're talking about here, Dave, is digital experiences, and whether they're customer facing or whether they're employee facing. Um, the digital experiences are there, are largely the same tools. Granted, they're used slightly differently, but they still are the same tools. And so I, I think <clears throat> right now, if you want to remain competitive, you, you do need to um, sell them together. But I think over time, you will need to have an integrated back end. And, you know, that also helps when, when it comes to deploying AI features. A lot of those capabilities are the same, you know, voice analytics, speech recognition, things like that. So... Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, and I, I do think it could drive a, a wave of M and A activity in this space too. Well, well, let's take the let's take the two scenarios. When is it best to go with two providers, and when is it best to go with one one single provider? Uh, I'm uh, I'm thinking it makes sense to go with two providers if you have a very specialized use case. A lot of these uh, contact centers can get very sophisticated, very complex, and and of course, the CCAS providers are dedicated to this space, and they tend to be a little more advanced in their capabilities. And I'd, I'd also say incumbent. If you're if, if you already have a uh, solution you're happy with, then you should probably stick with that. And what are your thoughts on the two provider? Uh, when do you when do you, when do you <coughs> cover everything there, or do you have additional thoughts on that? I think a lot of it is just organizational infrastructure inside the company. If you've got a whole separate team focused on customer experience, and it's a whole separate buying centers, you likely are going to buy buy them separately. Um, uh, I, I think, um, you know, from an industry standpoint, we can predict these things are going to come together, but we've been saying networking and security is going to come together for a long time. Voice and data will come together. And in a lot of cases, the large organizations, they haven't. And so I think if you're, you know, if you're a large company and your companies, um, your, you know, your workflows are built around your tools, I think those are likely to stay best of breed and you'll pick your favorite contact center vendor. Okay, so Cezias, so let me ask you, uh, ask you uh, when do you think it's best to go with one provider, a single provider for both? Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of this comes down to, Dave, the, the organizational structure of the customer, right? If they're a large company, they likely have some, some, you know, some walls set up between 
the things that happen internally from a communication standpoint and the external communications through the contact center. In that case, I think you would go with two different providers. I think you're from a workflow perspective, they're different. The tools they use are different, right? And so the integrations that you're going to have to have are different. If you're a smaller organization, uh, you know, smaller retailers, uh, you know, the, the small law firms, things like that. I think from that standpoint, there's a lot of purchase benefits for buying it together, but then you do wind up having a lot of individuals that bridge the gap between being internal facing and external facing. And to the, you know, from that regard, you will, um, you, you would buy them together. In fact, one of the more interesting use cases I've seen through the pandemic are K through 12 organizations buying contact center seats um, to, to do a lot of notifi outbound notification for, you know, the status of school closing and things like that. That's a perfect example of buying them together. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not as critical as you are <clears throat> about that. I, I think I think we're going to see the reemergence of the standard or the default approach being a single provider. Vendors, uh, customers want to reduce their number of vendors. And as the UC vendors develop stronger and stronger, UCAS offering or CCAS offerings, I think we're going to see this more and more combined single offering. I think we're also going to see uh, more of the contact center agents uh, engaged in in team chat uh, and and video communications and the, and you get that with the broader UCAS suite. So I I think that in, if it's not a specialized uh, advanced contact center capability, I think we're going to see more and more of the uh, the combined single provider delivering CCAS and UCAS. Yeah, I mean that might happen over time, but we haven't even consolidated down UC capabilities. You still have ones that are stronger on video than voice, and you know vice versa. So the, from a UC perspective, they're still all jockeying for position to just get meetings, video, and phone, right? Um, with contact center being more up in the horizon, I do think from a UC perspective, Dave, there is some importance for the for the contact center, the contact center capabilities because I I think over time. UC capabilities wind up becoming more commoditized, where CC capabilities wind up being more value add. And so, if I were a company like a Ring or a Zoom, and I large and I relied largely on UC seats to make my money, I'd be eyeing that contact center seat space because it is so much more lucrative and more profit uh, profit driven. No sticky too. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that wraps up uh, this week's episode of Real Time Recorded, and thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week with yet another episode of Real Time Recorded. Thanks. Thanks.